Welcome back to Intro to Physical Anthropology. I'm your instructor, David Leitner, and today we will be talking about genus Homo. Uh, today, uh, in this video, we're going to just talk a little bit about the context for the evolution of genus Homo and what the main sort of defining traits are. So, let's get started. So, just a reminder, um, we're now into the period when the Pleistocene sort of climate began changing abruptly uh, and going through cycles of glaciation and interglacial periods. Um, that means basically going into and out of ice ages on a regular basis. Um, there's both this sort of 41,000 and then later a more like a 100,000 year cycle for these, uh, and you can see that although temperature fluctuations have always been normal, um, the intensity of these fluctuations is markedly different from what's come before. Um, the, the degree, the, the amount of change in temperature is much greater and over shorter periods. Um, so that means that environments are going to be changing drastically as well. On a regular basis. Remember, in evolutionary terms, at least for a, a large mammal like humans, a um, hundred thousand years isn't very long. Uh, it's a it's a it's a finite period of time, actually, and um, isn't very much time for new mutations to arise. So, what we see during this period is the beginning of new behavioral adaptations, or rather, an adaptation. Uh, that enables behavioral adaptations. Um, so with that said, let's look at what some of these changes are. So the first thing that you'll notice about the genus Homo in general is that it is the first time we have an increase of brain size that begins to outpace increases in body size. Um, all of genus Homo has larger brains than Australopithecines do, significantly more, um, and their faces are significantly less prognathic, so they're more agnathic, uh, smaller faces and smaller teeth overall. Um, this is going to be very important because, of course, change of brain size, some of it will be due to changing body size, but Later on, it will be exclusively, or at least mostly, due to changes in behavior uh, and capacities for certain kinds of behavior. Um, the genus starts off very small. Um, Homo habilis is really only about the same stature as Australopithecus anamensis or any of the other Australopithecines. Um, but with Homo erectus, we start to see much longer legs uh, and a taller body overall. This, of course, makes striding bipedalism, uh, running and walking, more efficient. Uh, you can cover more distance for the same amount of energy. There may also be a shift in diet. It's uncertain exactly how early it starts, but could be very close to the beginning. Uh, from uh, being only occasional meat eaters or perhaps n not meat eaters at all with the exception of things like uh, insects to becoming scavengers and eventually hunters for, uh, for mammals and lizards and other kinds of animals. Uh, we also see them covering more territory in general. They, they're peripatetic, which is a fancy word that means they have a tendency to walk around, to wander. Um, so eventually this leads to Homo erectus becoming the first hominin to leave Africa, in fact. And finally, we see much more food processing going on. In other words, you're not just sort of picking stuff and eating it, but they're using tools to process that, uh, whether it's vegetable matter or meat. So... A lot of interesting behavioral as well as dietary and um, anatomical changes going on here. Uh, I should also note, too, that as this sort of rise in meat-eating occurs, 
the size of the intestinal tract actually decreases as well. And that also sort of goes in line with the amount that the the brain start increasing as well. So there's a trade-off here where um, the processing of food, uh, particularly the, these protein sources, means that your gut doesn't have to do as much of the digesting. This is particularly true once fire is applied to food because it breaks it down, as we'll see. Um, and this enables uh, smaller guts, and you can take all that energy you would have put into building a bigger gut into building bigger brains and other tissues. Now, for early genus Homo, we've got two different perspectives on how many species are out there. The first is a lumper perspective. Remember, lumpers are very conservative with their criteria for a new species. Lumpers view there as being just Homo habilis, which is a very small-bodied hominin found only in Africa, and Homo erectus, which is a larger-bodied hominin found in Africa, and very soon after it appears in Africa, we find it in other parts of the world as well. Um, splitters, on the other hand, view habilis and it, as uh, being actually two different species, one being Habilis, the other Rudolphensis. We'll talk more about them in another video. And they view Erectus as being two different species, one being Erectus, the other being Ergaster. Now, this is the result of, although we do have lots of fossils, the fossil record isn't necessarily incomplete record, so there's a lot of gaps uh, that make it difficult to say definitively where to draw the line at a species. Uh, it can come from using different species concepts, and just the very fact that, you know, nature doesn't think in species. Evolution doesn't think in the terms of species, that there's a point where it's definitely a different species. Um, evolution is a dynamic, ongoing process, so us trying to apply species criteria is really just about us trying to understand that process more. Uh, and so, although it, uh, one of these positions may be more correct than the other, given the evidence, it's something that we have to argue. Um, and the real question comes down to how much variation is enough. When you see variation in fossils that may be representative of vastly different geographic areas over vastly different amounts of time, how do you know if the amount of variation you're seeing is because of evolved traits between those two or because of normal variation in both populations? It's very difficult to tell until you have more data. All right, so that gives us our introduction to the genus Homo. Uh, in the next few videos, we'll di dive deeper into the lumper splitter positions for each of these species, and then talk in depth about stone tools and some of the behavioral adaptations that uh, that both uh, Habilis and Erectus uh, tended to develop. Um, with that said, thank you very much. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you soon.